Today I want to talk about the third book that I've read in the 1900s uh, thing, challenge, challenge. Um, this book I read was by a French author named André Guidé. This book is called Le Moraliste, or The Immoralist in English. Uh, as you can see it was written in 1902. So, uh, it's a small, smaller book, quite a bit smaller than, than Bud and Brooks, uh, which I welcome. Um, and it was one of those books that I wish I hadn't read the introduction before I read the book. Um, and I'll tell you why. So the, the, the narrative of the story goes like this. There's a, a young man who's recently married, and he doesn't really know his wife too well. They're not, it's not like a long love that's finally consummated in marriage. Uh, but they've just recently married, and, and they're fairly unknown to one another. And, and frankly, it doesn't seem that they, it doesn't seem like they're, they really have much in common. Um, and what little they have in common, they don't even know yet, because they're, they're just becoming acquainted. So anyway, they're, they're traveling around on their honeymoon, and um, Michel, the husband, ends up getting sick. He's getting, he gets really, really sick with tuberculosis, and he's like, like deathbed sick. Um, and in this time, uh, his wife's taking care of him, and his, wife, his, his feelings towards his wife are, are pretty ambivalent. Um, you know, there are moments of pity and moments of like, uh, moments of sort of unexplained, unrooted hatred towards her and uh, all these things. And anyway, he, he sort of, he's being helped and taken care of by this young boy there in, uh, I guess, Algeria or Tunisia, one or the other. They're sort of in those both French Algeria, French Tunisia. Um, and he's being cared for by a young boy, you know, a, a fairly young boy. 14 or 15 or 12 or something and and he finds he sort of hints at the idea that he's he's quite a bit more he's quite a bit of, uh, more attracted to this young boy than than um, to his wife and to women in general and but it's not it's not that explicitly spelled out and, and this this is one of the reasons I'm, I'm frustrated having read the introduction uh, the anyway that's the beginning of the narrative and, and the book goes on he gets better she gets worse um, and throughout the thing, he's exploring, through one part of the book, he's exploring his sort of past and, and where it's brought him today. And, and then the other, part of the, the, the other part of his story is he's sort of deciding to um, uh, live, I guess, for the moment um, and sort of follow his instincts, much of which are... Um, not probably really good for his marriage and not probably good for his reputation uh, and the, the way that he's perceived by others because it turns out uh, it, it sort of becomes a journey of, of sexual repression and, and specifically repressing um, his own sense of his own sort of natural uh, attraction towards men towards younger men um, anyway and so there's there's it's sort of a story of denial and, and uh, exploration and, and things like that so the, the thing that I, I'm frustrated about is that he's going through these sort of um, unpacking sessions sort of unpacking his identity and trying to figure out trying to get to the bottom of who he is as a, as a being, as a sexual being, and, and as a being that loves, and, and all these things. And um, in, in the story, we're given some inferences, we're given some hints about his possible attraction to, to men, but it's never very explicit. Nothing is ever, I've already used the word, but nothing is ever consummated, nothing is ever uh, acted on rather it's just like a sort of an urge or or sort of a visceral just um, 
kind of tummy feeling. And so that the introduction basically goes into the into the story of Andre Gide's life and is telling us that Gide struggled with the idea of, of homosexuality and, and had to do a lot of unpacking, sexual unpacking and and urge unpacking and um, identity unpacking in the same way that, that the character Michelle is doing throughout the book. And so you you know, I started off waiting for that and expecting that and sort of sort of looking for it and so I think there there are instances of you know in of, of events in the book where I was saying oh yeah clearly that's this character exploring his homosexuality his latent homosexuality and and I don't know whether or not I would have picked up on that had I not read the introduction um, I would have rather it be you know a postscript uh, or, an, or an epilogue where they would have explained uh, an afterward where they would have explained this idea of, of um, sexual exploration and, and repression and things, because then it would have been nice to see if I picked out those, if I picked those things out as blatantly exploratory. Um, the reason I say that is not because I, I think I'm a dense person that misses a lot of stuff, although I do miss plenty uh, as a reader. Which I'm fine with, um, but I mention that because in the in the introduction, it's the book is described as one that challenged people in a lot of ways. Not the most important of which was this idea of, of homosexuality, and evidently there was more to it in in debating sort of Freudian uh, Freudian sexual identity versus like Nietzschean. Um, worldview and, and, and like uh, the view of a being and, and of you know existence as far as that goes and so evidently a lot of people didn't pick up on the homosexuality of it and felt that it was more of just a I guess sort of a general self exploration kind of thing uh, does it really matter I don't know but I felt like I was reading a book that was strongly geared towards sexuality and sexual enlightenment, and I, I kind of wish I kind of wish I'd known the book before the introduction, so that I would have either picked up on that or not. Um, either way, a very interesting book. Um, you know, the language was nice. The there evidently Edward said has written some about this book and and, and a number of others as well. Um, and specifically about their somewhat colonialist uh, depiction of, of certain places around the world. In this case, like I said, French Tunisia and French Algeria. And it, you know, having read that that sort of quote or that line from said after the after having read the book, I can I can think back on the book and, and see where he's coming from. Um, and so, anyway, um, interesting book. The, there was one quote that I wanted to mention. Um, he says, all that once disturbed me has become delicious to me. What's up, man? No, you're cool. Uh, which I thought, I thought was a fairly um, telling quote of the book. And then, of course, at the end, at the end you're, they're sort of laid out. Um, in literally the last line of the book or the last line of his um, sort of diatribe where he's, he's told this story to his three friends uh, where he, he sort of lays out the fact that this that there has been that sexuality has been a key component of this time of self-exploration. Anyway, very interesting book. Um, shorty. And uh, I enjoyed it. I'd like to read more by, by Gide. Uh, and apparently there is quite a bit more, so maybe we'll get to one of those next. Uh, 
Uh, speaking of next, right now we're doing Henry James' 1903 novel, The Ambassadors, which I'm having a hard time getting through, but I'll talk about that one shortly. So, for now, adios.